We have made it to the final video of this unit. All right. Unit nine, lesson four, calculating the equilibrium constants. All right, guys, so in this unit, all right, we are going to be talking about what is phase equilibrium. We're going to be talking about equilibrium constants. Then we're going to be throwing in some regions challenge questions with doing equilibrium formulas and the different factors that are going to be affecting equilibrium. So let's begin. Okay, so e equilibrium exists for the following phase changes. As we said in our last unit, melting and freezing occur in the same point in time, vaporization and condensation happen at the same point in time, and then sublimation and deposition will happen at the same point in time. But in equilibrium, in a closed system. Okay, so when we look at our phase change diagrams, which we have done in previous units, again, remember that if you alter your pressure or temperature, on your closed system, then the solid will change into a liquid, into a gas, or you may have sublimation or deposition. And remember, in a closed system, you can change your temperature by heating things or pressure by putting pressure or squeezing the chamber that your gas or aqueous solution is on. So don't forget, guys, in a closed system, as we see on the left, as your rate of evaporation is occurring, enough of your kinetic energy is going to then convert back those gas molecules and convert them back into liquid, which is called condensation. And as we're noticing, we can notice little clocks. As our time increases, or as the rate of evaporation and condensation is occurring, we're noticing that it's happening more and more frequently. But the one thing that stays the same is the mass of the water. We're never losing liquid, and we're never losing our water vapor. The equilibrium constant, which is KQ, and the K comes from the German word for constant, is the ratio of the production of the product concentration to reactant concentration. Each concentration is raised to the number of moles of that substance in the balanced chemical equation. So we're going to be looking again at chemical formulas and analyzing how many moles of that substance we have. Now, when we talk about equilibrium constants and KEQ, this is really only going to affect gases or anything that is an aqueous solution. And again, it's only in a closed system. So here is the KEQ formula. The C's and D's represent our products. The A's and D's are going to represent our reactants. Um, we would like you guys to write this into your table T so that you have it for class and quizzes. Uh, but if you notice the mock formula that we put on the bottom, the little a's represent the moles, the capital uh, letters, the capital a's, uh, represent the actual substance. Okay, so when you think about your chemical formulas, all right, you're going to have to just analyze what is occurring and you have to then plug them in correctly into the KEQ formula. Just remember, your numerators, the stuff on top, is going to be your products, and your denominator, the stuff beneath the line, are your reactants. And if you haven't realized this, products will always go first in chemistry, and then your reactants final, then initial. And for you SAT guys, don't forget this. Your upper case letters, they represent your compounds, but they also represent concentration which is what we're going to talk about later in this video, which is also called molarity. All right, so using the same formula that we just looked at, we're going to be analyzing the A's, the B's, and how they're in equilibrium with C's and D's. So if we were to think about a closed system, again, that's like a water bottle with a top on it, but instead of water, we now have inside our bottle hydrogen gas and iodine gas. Those reactants will be simultaneously making hydrogen iodide gas, two moles of it, but at the exact same time, the hydrogen iodide is going to be decomposing into your starting reactants. So, analyzing this question, we see that we have one mole of hydrogen gas, one mole of iodine gas, and two moles of our product hydrogen iodide. So, if we take the KEQ formula, we are going to now try to put the different reagents and products showing their actual compounds into that formula. So at this time, we'd love it if you guys could pause this video and give this a chance. Okay, so 
Looking at your answer, you guys should have got something similar to this. We're noticing that our product, which is the hydrogen iodide gas, has a little superscript or exponent of two. That two is to represent how many moles of product we have. I'm wondering if a lot of them thought that they needed to put some sort of numbers in here. No, not right now. Okay, so again, this is just labeling what your products are and what your reactants are, and then explaining how many moles uh, they're going to be raised to. So if you notice, the hydrogen iodide is raised to two, to the ex uh, exponent of two, because it had two moles. Hydrogen iodine in the denominators, however, do not have an exponent because they are uh, each only one mole. So here's a new equation. We want you to try this on your own again. Using the KEQ equation, set it up. Please notice that we have two moles of nitrogen monoxide with two moles of hydrogen gas forming one mole of nitrogen gas and two moles of water. Uh, and it's a reversible reaction, so it's going to go in the opposite direction as well, meeting at some sort of equilibrium in a closed container. So right now, looking at that formula and the KEQ formula, plug in all of the reagents and the products and their correct superscripts. So you guys hopefully should have gotten something very similar to this. Nitrogen yep. gas is raised to the 1, water is raised to the 2 because of the amount of moles. Uh, nitrogen monoxide and hydrogen gas both raised to the second power as well because of their moles. Now, you guys may say, well, the last problem we only had one uh, species on the numerator. Well, sometimes you will only get one product, but in certain situations, you guys have to analyze and realize that you may have one product, so you should only have one numerator. Okay? You can only do this for gases and aqueous, though. So if you have something that's labeled as a solid or a liquid, it cannot be placed in this equation. That means you do not write it. You do not put it in as a reactant or product. You ignore just it. Ignore it, like we do to you guys. <laughs> so if you regions guys, <laughs> you only need to know how to set up the formulas, like we just showed you in the last two situations. That's it. There are no more calculations. But we highly recommend that you guys follow along with the rest of us, and we're going to go now and tackle the entire mathematics on how we figure out if this reaction is going to go to the reagents or if it's going to go forward to the products. Shift. Concentration, which is that capital M, we're going to you know, look at it more in the next unit, but it's a measurement of how much substance is in a liquid, like a solution or a gas. So it's essentially how much stuff we have. The larger the number is, the larger the M will be, or the stronger the calculation will be. So when we talk about molarity again, let's look at the picture to the right. We're noticing that if you put a little bit of salt into water, we call it a dilute solution. But if you put a lot of salt into that water and it's really salty to taste, we call that concentrated. It's the exact same thing in chemistry. A very large M shows a very concentrated solution or a very concentrated gas, but a very small M says it's going to be very dilute. It's not going to have a big presence. So again now, we're going to be using the KEQ formula, and I would just want to reanalyze this. When we're talking about the substances, which are your capital letters, they are going to be given to you as an actual concentration, molarity, numerical value. Right. And those okay. square brackets actually mean concentration of, so the molarity of that substance. And don't forget, guys, that the little superscripts, the exponents, those are your moles of the substance. Okay? So what we're going to be doing now is using both the concentration of moles of the substance to calculate the actual numerical value of KEQ. Now you're going to be multiplying the C's times D, dividing it by A times B, just like you would in math. So here are the values of KEQ, uh, when they are greater than 1, means that we're going to favor those products. And if the value is less than 1, that means they're going to favor the reactants. However, a value equal to 1 is, means that the whole thing is in equilibrium. So let's go back and try the same problem that we just analyzed before. 
So we're taking two moles of nitrogen monoxide mixed with two moles of diatomic hydrogen, and it's in equilibrium with one mole of diatomic nitrogen and two moles of water vapor. So what I have now supplied you guys with is the actual equilibrium concentrations, the molarity of each of the four species. We notice for nitrogen monoxide, we have a 0.062 molar solution. For hydrogen gas, we have a 0.012 molar solution. Nitrogen gas, we have a 0.019 molar solution. And water gas, we have a 0.138 molar solution. Now, before we just put in the species name in the formula, but now I want you guys to actually put the numerical number. And again, for the superscripts or the exponents, put down what that amount of moles is going to be. So we're noticing we have two moles, two moles, one mole, and two mole. And plug in all of these numerical data into the formula. So we're going to have uh, nitrogen gas, which is 0 0.019 molarity, molar. We're also going to multiply it by 0.138 to the second power because we have two moles of water. We're going to divide it by 0 0.062 raised to the second power because we have two moles of nitrogen monoxide. And we're then going to multiply that by 0 0.012 raised to the second power because we have two moles of hydrogen gas. When this you guys do these calculations in your calculator, please make sure that everything that is a numerator is in parentheses. Then divide it by your denominator that's all in parentheses as well. You guys are going to have issues with this if you don't use parentheses because you may get some funky numbers along the way. Yeah, your calculators do not do order of operations correctly, but you should have learned PEMDAS, which means parentheses, then exponents, then multiply, and then divide. So right now, take the time to punch this into your calculator, divide it correctly, and write down your answer. Pause this video now and do that calculation. All right, so looking at what you just did, did you guys get this number, 653? Hope so, because that's what we got. All right, so 653, if you go back into your notes, you'll realize that if you have any value above 1 for KEQ, what does that mean? It's going to mean that the products are favored. All right, so what does that mean? It just means that we're going to have more products in concentration versus the reactants in concentration at equilibrium. So if you go back and you look up top where it says equilibrium concentration in that gray box, you'll also notice that we seem to have a higher concentration of our water vapor. That is showing you that we're going to be making more products in this reaction. And for all you regents, guys, if you got to this point and you got that same number, kudos. Excellent job. We are very proud of you. We are. I'm even proud of them for sticking along. <laughs> if you're still listening and you're in our region's classes, <laughs> with us you guys then. are great. great. We love you guys. So the equilibrium constant, again, K just represents constant. I know constant doesn't start with a K, but, but in, in German, Germany is constant, a hard K. <laughs> so uh, the equilibrium constant is, the, is temperature dependent and will shift depending on the reaction type if endothermic reactions, if there's an increase, it will increase. If there's a decrease, it will decrease. For endothermic reactions, there's a direct relationship. In an exothermic re reaction, there is a indirect relationship. Temperature is increased, the KEQ will decrease. And temperature is decreased, the KEQ will increase. Now, when we talk about the equilibrium constant, it's not going to be affected by concentration changes because it's at equilibrium. It's not going to be affected by volume, so making the space bigger or smaller. It's not going to be affected by how much pressure you put on it or the addition of a catalyst, which would speed up any of the chemical reactions that are occurring inside your closed system. All right, guys. So things you should have learned. Uh, phase equilibrium in closed systems, equilibrium constant, how to set up the equilibrium constant, what is concentration, regions challenge, or actual calculations of the equilibrium constant, and finally factors that will affect the equilibrium. Okay, we are finally done with this unit. That's it, guys. So, if you stuck around and you, you, you were able to get through all of this, we salute. Excellent job. We hope to see you guys in class. <laughs>
soon, maybe. <laughs> We're not too sure where you guys are going. We're tired, guys. It's like, it's like 4 o'clock and we're ready to go to sleep. Alrighty, have a great night. What happens in the world?